All right, Johnny, how are you today? Good, Stu. How are you? What's going on this week? Not too much. Uh, obviously, it was the Puente at the weekend, so just took some time off and relaxed. Did yeah, you get up to anything? Long weekend. Yeah, went away for a few days, had a good time away oh, nice. out of the, uh, out of the uh, stressful big city life. And uh, always yeah. good to get away somewhere into uh, nature, as they say. Yeah, always when you have the chance, uh, good to take advantage, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And there's plenty of public holidays coming up. There are indeed. So let's kick off uh, today with that. Okay. So the official 2022 holiday calendar has been published uh, for Spain yep. from the, what is it, the National Gazette, I think it's called, the translation? The, the uh, official state the, gazette, I think, is the translation. Well, that's right. Well, yeah, the, uh, the Boletin, Boletin de Estado. That's it. Oficial Oficial, de Estado. That's yeah. it. Nothing happens yeah. unless it's published in that. <laughs> yeah. So we got the, the standard holidays, you know, the 1st of January, the 15th of April, the yeah. Easter Friday, yeah. uh, 1st of May, 15th August, 12th of October, 1st of November, 6th and 8th of December, and Christmas Day, the 25th of December. Did, did you say the 6th of January as well there? Uh, did I? Uh, I missed it, but yeah, the 6th of January is also in, included there as well, yeah. 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 Obviously, a very popular holiday as well. <laughs> I, think it's, uh, I think it's one of the most popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah especially for kids, you know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, what's interesting is that some of these holidays fall on a Sunday, um, particularly the first of May holiday. Yep. Um, and so most autonomous communities roll over the holidays that are on Sundays, but not yeah. all of them. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I picked up on the Canary Islands, Cantabria, uh, Baleares, and Madrid that don't roll it over. Uh, but Madrid has its own local holiday on the on the uh, the second of May anyway. Mm. So uh, yeah, I remember what I remember when I lived in France. Um, there was this English comedian who lives there. He always made jokes about how the pub, when the public holidays come out, it's it's always like the lottery. <laughs> Yeah, well, people no, plan their year uh, according to when those holidays are. A lot of people are, you know, writing down on the on the calendar the dates that they they can get away. They they do the uh, the scheduling to see if they can get a puente in there or not. Maybe there's one that falls exactly. on a Tuesday. They can take that Monday. So everything's planned. You know, it's a it's a thing that a lot of people look forward to to get their hands on that calendar and see they can plan their year. That's it. Yeah, indeed. And there's a lot of possible puentes next year as well. So the sixth of the sixth of January is a Thursday. Uh, so that also gives an opportunity. Let me double check. Sorry. Uh, yes, yeah, so the sixth of January falls on a Thursday. The first of November is on a Tuesday, and then the sixth and eighth of December are a Tuesday and a Thursday. That's the whole week gone. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how many people will take the whole week. <laughs> yeah, so I think even this year it's a Monday and a Wednesday, I think. So there's going to be a lot of people taking those, uh, taking a few extra days off that and taking the whole week off. Now that we can travel again, of course, providing that we don't get any more restrictions. And I don't think anybody's planning more restrictions. So we should be clear. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But yeah, hopefully um, an opportunity to travel a bit more yeah. um, with the upcoming holidays. That is true, that is true. And uh, what is it, uh, 13 public holidays or something, 14? 14, yeah, 14, and then 12, what does it say? Uh, about, yeah, there's 14 compulsory holidays, and then 12 of them are official state holidays, and then each autonomous community has, has two, two holidays okay. uh, that it can put in as well. Yeah. All right, good one. All right, that's it. Yes. So we'll, I'll plan my calendar for next year. That's it. Right. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. what's, next, what's next, John? On to pension plans now. So we talked about this a bit on the channel. So last year, um, they made a cut to the, the tax deferred base, and mm. there's been another cut to the tax deferred base. So at the end of 2020, uh, they changed the limit from 8000 to 2000 per year that you could pay in with tax deferred. Um, it's now been cut from 2000 down to 1500 tax deferred. Okay. Yeah. So you can still put as much as you want in there, but you're going to pay the tax up front. Is that what, is that what we, we believe? That's my understanding, yes. So the way it works is um, contributions to a pension plan works like, work like tax deductibles from your um, like your taxable income yep. base. So the example that I saw is if someone earns 30 grand a year, 
their taxable base is 25 grand and they contribute that full 1,500 euros of their allowance, then the way they'd be taxed is as if they were only earning 23,500. Okay. So, yeah, so the tax, I think it's deferred until you withdraw it from the pension plan, which obviously yeah, 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 in yeah, Spain yeah, is. That's right. Well, I, I think much, it much used to be 8,000 or 9,000 or something like that, which encouraged people yeah. to put money in. And then, of course, you know, the. The argument always was that when you take that money out when you retire, you get hit with the tax bill. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. So it was eight thousand before. Mm. Um, the reason behind this cut, because I was, I was a bit surprised by it until I read into it a bit more. Obviously, kind of the pension plan providers are, are critical of it because for them it, it de incentivizes savings into pension plans. But uh, the reasoning behind it is that they've increased the limit for company pension plans. Okay. So that's gone from 8,000 to 8,500. And so I think the incentive is to try and get people to start contributing to their company mm -hmm. uh, pension plans rather than individual. The, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't know what, uh, whether it's a good idea or not. I think a lot of people have come to the conclusion that perhaps it's it's better to invest in something else and, you know, maybe in property where you're going to get a better return because I think we've mentioned that, Johnny, um, in the past that if you do invest in one of these, I mean, the stock market in Spain hasn't performed for a long time. So you're going to be, you have to be careful where you put your money. If you, if you put it into the IVEX 35, you're not going to get a big return or at least there hasn't been a big return over the last 10 years. So are you, what are you going to do? Invest it internationally, I suppose, maybe? Yeah. Well, I mean, a lot of these pension plans anyways, they're, they're built with international portfolios. Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe an advantage you had with an individual pension plan is you maybe had more control over what you could pick um, and you could maybe have a bit more choice over your strategy. Mm. Whereas with an employer, you're somewhat restricted to what the employer's chosen. Yeah. But then you may have the advantage of a match if your employer decides to match your contributions. So that yeah, it's yeah. free money essentially. Well, that's right. And now we're at four percent inflation, I think. So you know, it's um, you're going to have to look around to try to get some uh, to get a return. <laughs> yeah, time to start investing. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah, but uh, anyway. yeah, yeah. So the, I think they also mentioned something in the budgets about uh, pensions, how they're going to be just not 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 the private ones, just the general state mm. pensions, how they're going to be. Uh, increased according to CPI or something. It's a big, big chunk of the of the budget. The the the, the state pensions. Uh, yeah, I, th I think I saw something about that a couple of weeks ago. It's mm. is it two percent increase or is it was it a bit more? Uh, I'm not sure. I think they're trying to get it in line with uh, CPI. I think, but um, yeah. I, I'm not sure. But all, all I saw that the that the new budget something like thirty nine euros in every one hundred is is pensions. So. Uh, so okay. it's, a, it's a big chunk. Mm. So getting people to save for their own retirement, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one here because a lot of people historically haven't done so. Yeah, and uh, I mean the, Euro the European Union has also um, picked up Spain on it as well yeah. um, because of kind of the historical situation with pensions in the country. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've seen various attempts to try and rectify this we'll see which uh, how it comes out i suppose yeah 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 well that's it it's the big question that uh, governments are going to have in the future how to how to uh take care of its pensioners mm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's it all right good johnny all right next uh so we talked about the rider law a couple of times so there's yeah, a new we platform we did i think we mentioned that one company quit spain deliveroo was it yeah, they were contemplating it, and I think it was around this time of year where they were going to make their final decision. Uh, I'm not sure if they've made it yet or not. Um, I think they yeah. did. Ah, okay. I'm not sure. I haven't checked for yeah. a while. But... Yeah, I've ordered delivery maybe a month ago. Yeah. I had quite a lot of discount codes, so that's a shame. <laughs> but never what, mind. Uh, what comes in. Yeah, well, that's one of the reasons that I order uh, Uber Eats is because of the discounts that they give you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the Uber Eats ones are really good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyways, we've got a new player in the market called Rocket, uh, Rocket. which, uh, yeah. So I believe they're based in Amsterdam and have Ukrainian heritage, I believe. Um, but yeah, they, they're coming to Spain. Uh, they're launching in A Coruña, Granada, Pamplona and Valencia with their first 500 riders with the intention of expanding into the bigger cities as well. Okay, so, so just run those cities by me again. What was what, what? So, A Coruña, yeah. 
Pamplona, Valencia, and Granada. So all medium-sized cities, let's say. Yeah, yeah. One thing to note, so in the, the cities that they plan to expand to after, so the likes of Bilbao, Madrid, Marbella, Malaga, yeah. I saw, um, Barcelona wasn't in there, and they said later down that if they can later look to enter into the market in Barcelona, then they will. But the main idea is that they want to try and get a foot in where they can get an, a fair share of the market and have a stable operating base, which I suppose when you think about Barcelona, there's probably is a lot of rider competition in there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of um, these apps popping up or they have popped up over the last few years. I think Globo, we've, put, we've spoken about Globo before. I think they're the big player in the market here in Spain. Yeah, they are. Globo, of course, has diversified their services quite a lot as well. It's not just food delivery. You can get your shopping delivered. I actually got my shopping delivered the other day through Globo. Yeah, but um, they can't bring much though, can they? Only what they can fit in one of those little square things on the back of the of the bike. Is that true? Um, I don't know. They still managed to get me two big bags, so that was two, okay. Two, yeah, okay, good. But it's not yeah. the same as ordering, let's say, your, your Amazon. Uh, Prime or whatever it's called, where you get your, um, you know, your, your your weekly shopping done. You just ordered just for yourself, was it? Yeah, just for me. I mean, you have a minimum order of twenty euros, but that's a good point you make. Probably a rider's not going to be able to carry loads and loads of stuff. And, and did you see the guy that brought it? Uh, I did. He, was he, he, he just kind bike? of. No, I didn't. I mean, he came up into the the building, oh. but he had like the two bags like this. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm not sure how you transported it actually, whether yeah, it's on a bike yeah. or not. Because yeah. I, I think I read that that you, I mean you can order whatever you want, but it can't be too heavy because they have to fit it in. You know those little square um, box things they have on the back of the bikes, or so uh, even people that ride bicycles they have them on their back. You know, so obviously you can't yeah, yeah, have, yeah, you yeah. can't have twenty cans of uh, tomato puree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> It'd be a bit too heavy for them. But yeah, yeah it, well, in Madrid, it is a competitive market, and Globo, as you said, yeah, they not only food, but you can get pharma, you can get stuff from the chemist, from the pharmacy, you can get your shopping delivered as well. I think, uh, well, I've got the app here, it, just in the area that mm. I live, probably where you are, there's a lot more um, options. But if I just check here to see what they've, what they offer, Johnny, let's let me have a quick check here. I've got food, obviously, shops and gifts. Pharmacy and Beauty, Courier. So they've got a courier service up and running where you can send mm. a, a letter or a package or something, probably in Madrid or wherever you want to take it to. Breakfast and snacks, food and supermarket. And then in the middle, they've got one which says uh, anything. So wow. it says exp <laughs> explain in detail what you need. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Indeed, somebody, indeed. Somebody gets it for you. Mm. So yeah. they're, they're definitely the leader, I'd say. Um, and then... The other ones are trying to break into the market. Yeah, and particularly interesting at a time when this new rider laws come in, uh, because Rocket are going to comply with this rider law and hire their employees kind of on a permanent basis yeah. and give them those those good conditions. It's one of their, um, I think the guy, the founder, he said it's one of the key things, one of their main investments in their people. So. Good luck. Yeah, yeah. So if yeah. you have to compete with people that aren't doing that. But I suppose that everybody has to now with the new rider law. I'm not sure whether that's being being followed by these companies or not. But it is difficult to compete if you've got the the gig economy workers up against people that are on a on, on a on a salaried um, uh, on, a, on a salary contract. Yeah, it's interesting. Hmm. Interesting times in that space. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. We'll see how they go. What are they called? Rocket. Yeah. Are they in Paris, London? They're in thirty-seven other countries. Okay, uh, so I can quite get, big. Yeah, they're in, they're in quite a few in Europe. But they also said that they wanted to launch in eight new countries this year. So they're they're really focused on their, their international expansion right now. Oh, you know what? We'll see how they go. We'll see if they uh, arrive uh, arrive where I am here. Mm. <laughs> yeah. All right. What's next, John? Yeah, and so last point we have is a new law on preventing food waste. So okay. yeah. Not sure when this is going to be introduced, but um, the law essentially states that places that serve food or restaurants, they're going to have to 
visibly display and offer uh, clients the opportunity to take away any food that they don't consume while they're eating there and provide them with free mm. Tupperware or containers to be able to, to take it away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. A lot yeah. of uh, food waste, take it home. <clears throat> well, I suppose you, for some people it would be just taking it from the restaurant bin to your own bin, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you'd hope not. Like... My personal, like, I always, if I pay for food, I, I try and consume it. I try and prevent food waste where I can, either by not buying too much food, or if I don't consume food, then I'll try and eat it at a later date. Yeah. Um, you don't mind eating leftovers? No, no, not at all. I mean, it's, it's good for your pockets, and it's, it's also good for the environment in a sense as well. Yeah. If, you, uh, if you're able to, I, don't, yeah. I don't have a problem. I can eat a, you know, I can eat food two days afterwards been kept in the fridge well uh but some people i know don't like to eat the same food twice you know if i get a good meal i can have it for lunch and dinner you know, so sometimes, <laughs> yeah you know, like, but some people don't and um i suppose those are the people that might be a bit picky with this and i also saw um that they're also aiming this at the school canteens and business canteens which do make a lot of food in, uh, like like a like big big dishes of food and then they mm. might not use it all and they just chuck it out. Yeah, well, this is this kind of links back to some of the sustainability goals that the UN have. There mm. is a specific goal um, based around that, so I wouldn't be surprised if that's influenced this law in, in some respect. Well, there was a documentary on the well, a documentary is just a, like a television show with this uh, Spanish chef Chicote. Have you seen him? Chicote, I do know Chicote. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's quite uh, he's quite uh, popular on the t on the TV, uh, and mm -hmm. he was going around to, to these places, and he went to a few schools in one of the, the the richer parts of Madrid, and they were going through the bins at six o'clock, you know, in the evening, and, and 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 looking at the waste, and it was amazing how much bread was being thrown away, uh, huge dishes of pasta, and you know that food could be used to. To feed people basically right if you if you, mm -hmm, if, you yeah. if you could organize it um and i think there was was there not a world uh wasn't there a day dedicated to this last week or the week before oh not sure um, i think there was something like that yeah where like uh okay. where they were they've dedicated you know how that you know, every day is a day for something nowadays you know <laughs> and i think they actually they do dedicate a day to this uh you know the the deliberate waste of food I could be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. That's good though. Reducing food waste is something. Yeah. It's something, yeah. Actually, it was a task at university for me one time. I think we had to do some research on it. I couldn't really understand it at the time, but as I kind of came to learn more about it, I actually became quite interested yeah. in it and mm -hmm. since then tried to reduce food waste. Well, there are, there are companies that do recycle food, and it is it's quite a good business. I remember giving English classes in a company that was that used to go around to all of the supermarket bins and collect the the certain products that they'd throw away meat meat products and fish products, basically that they would then turn into uh, animal um, food to feed oh, okay. uh, to feed animals around the country. So uh, there is a business there for uh, recycled food. I think the company was called ReFood. Mm. so there is that's a business there well. yeah that's it yeah mm -hmm. all Very right good. good anything else Johnny? that was all for today's Stu. all right great so we'll wrap it up good speaking to you again and uh Likewise. we'll be in contact for next week great all right. you then, have Stu. a good one see you later take care bye bye, 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 bye.